Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for Microsoft Excel. This screencast covers section 9.5 correlations, including 9.6 Spearman's rank correlation and 9.7 Pearson's product moment correlation. Research biologists are always trying to figure out how biological systems function. This path to discovery often starts with an observation that changes in a biological trait may be linked to changes in another trait or an environmental factor. This is often detected by the eye seeing a possible relationship when the data is plotted as a scatter graph. Here, it looks highly likely that the shell hardness is related to how much supplement is eaten. Often, however, many other biological and environmental factors can affect the trait we are interested in, and it can be difficult to be sure there is a relationship with so much noise about. You can see these points do not form a perfect straight line. This is where we can use the Spearman's rank correlation and the person's product moment correlation to give an indication whether the relationship you see is real. The person's product moment test is used on parametric data. If you do not know if your data is parametric, then check out my screencast called Is My Data Normally Distributed? If your data is not parametric or you are unsure, then you can use the Spearman's rank correlation. So let's do the tests. As you can see, I've already put the data in from table 9.8. Unfortunately, Excel won't allow me to do a Spearman's rank correlation, but I can do a Pearson's product moment correlation. And this is how I do it. I go up to data and click. I then track down to data analysis and click. And the data analysis window will open. I then select correlation and click OK. A window opens. The first thing I have to put in is the input range. So I click on this little square with the red arrow in it and I select the range. Now note I also select the column headings as well. I then click back on this little square and the input range has been placed in the box. I make sure the labels in the first row box is ticked because I included the first row headings. I then need to choose where I want my output to be placed. I can have it placed in a new workbook, a new worksheet but I want it placed on this worksheet, so I'm going to select an output range. I now have to click on this square with the red arrow to select where I want the output to be placed. I'm going to place it here. And I go back and press the button to enter my selection. I can now press OK. And here is my result. One of the problems with using long descriptive labels is, as you can see, Excel bunches them up. So I'm just going to widen the table so we can see the result. The reason I included the labels when I made my selection is Excel will now insert those labels in the relevant position in the table. And we can see that the Pearson's product moment correlation is equal to 0 0.994 if we round it up. The correlation coefficient is a number between 1 and minus 1. That tells us how closely our data is linearly correlated with 1 or minus 1 meaning perfectly correlated, while 0 means the points are not correlated at all. As you can see, I've drawn some scatter graphs to illustrate these points. The middle graph, which has an R value of 1, shows that all the data points lie on a straight line. But as the R value decreases from 0 0.85 to 0 0.7, you can see the scatter of the points around the line increases until we eventually reach an R value of 0 where you cannot functionally draw a line through it at all. The points are totally scattered. A minus correlation coefficient suggests that as x increases, y decreases, so the slope is in the opposite direction to a positive R value. So a Pearson's product moment correlation of 0 0.994 suggests our data are very well correlated. But is this due to chance on fleeky data, or is this a real result? Normally, we would have a probability value to tell us if this result is significant. Unfortunately, Excel won't easily allow me to turn this into a probability. But you can use this number to work out the probability and whether this result is significant by referring to the tables in the book. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.